I am to speak upon the, on the bill, Mr. President. Proceed, Senator. I am comfortable that each of us, Republican, Democrat, pro-life, and pro-choice, agree with the following statement. If we are to err today, we should err on the side of life. If we senators are to err today, let us err on the side of life. Senate Bill 160 challenges us, probably in a way that no bill ever has in the history of this Senate, challenges us to understand what it means to err on the side of life. On your desktop, I believe, is a picture taken with a microscopic camera. It is a photograph of a human blastocyst. Structurally, that blastocyst is like a very, very, very small water balloon. And floating in the solution in the upper left are tiny building blocks called stem cells. If you were to puncture the wall of the blastocyst with a pipette and extract the building blocks floating inside, you would possess a material that can live and grow independently from the blastocyst. If you were then to apply various proteins to these building blocks, you would cause their genetic code to change and you could push them to metamorphosize into any type of cell in the human body that you wanted them to become a heart cell, a brain cell, a pancreatic cell, or even a spinal cord cell. If you turn them into a pancreatic cell, you would hold in your hands the clues to type 1 diabetes, a disease that attacks the pancreas of a young child. Type 1 diabetes, as all of us know, is incurable. And while we can control the disease through synthetic insulin, the invariable fluctuations in a patient's blood sugar will over time prematurely harden every artery in the individual's body, leading to a loss of eyesight, heart attacks, premature heart disease, and the amputation of limbs. But just maybe, no, not maybe, probably in time, those stem cells could be used to rebuild the child's damaged pancreas. If you were to turn the stem, stem cells into the cells of the lower brain, you may find yourself at the doorway of understanding amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease, a disease that over a period of months will destroy every single muscle in a loved one's body. Initially, motion is restricted then partial paralysis, total paralysis, incontinence, the ability to move one's tongue, to speak, to swallow, and finally, to breathe. But just maybe, no, not maybe, probably, in time, you could find a way to use the patient's own stem cells to rebuild the motor neurons in the lower brain stem to halt or even God willing, to reverse the disease. And if you could turn the stem cells into spinal cord tissue, just think what you could do. You could find a boy who through his own misjudgment, or maybe through someone else's misjudgment, or maybe through no one's misjudgment, found himself paralyzed from the chest down in a crumpled car on the side of the road in his 17th year. A man who over the course of 23 years has watched all the muscles in his legs deteriorate. And yet, while his legs refuse to move, they nonetheless insist on twitches and spasms that are uncontrollable and leave him exhausted, continually fighting against his own body. You could find a man whose daily desire to walk is stronger than any human emotion you or I ever experience short of giving a loved one over to death, who because of his injuries urinates into a catheter, removes the excrement from his bowels using a rubber glove on his right hand, 
and who has never known and will never know the uniquely human feeling of laying quietly in the dark next to a woman, exhausted and in love. What if God gave you the knowledge to take those building blocks and lift him up out of that wheelchair and set him free? To open a world to him of children and after dinner walks, a romantic partner, and the dignity that God intended him. It would be like releasing him from that car after 23 years. If we are to err today, let us err on the side of life. 